Okay, today is Tuesday, March 17th, and uh, again, I'm having to get up and do something that I don't want to do that, you know, leads into my depression and into my uh, basic, you know, uh, problems that I'm having. Um, if you go and you look at my own private Guantanamo.com, you'll see where in 2001 I was denied emergency services and it took six, seven years and uh, going through Medicare and being told I was wrong and everything else and then going back with the signed confession to Medicare and them, of course, naturally telling me that I was still wrong even with the signed confession. No contrition, no error correction, no humanity, pretty much what I'm receiving from the Department of Public Health. Well, if you go to my own private Guantanamo.com, the signed confession was gathered by the Office of Inspector General, and it's the only one of its kind because it admits fault and guilt for having broken federal emergency law. If you've watched the prior videos, you've seen where I've gone to emergency and been denied emergency care. So, I am following up. If you looked at the prior videos, I believe it was in August of 2014, you'll see where I sent licensing and certification, you know, uh, my complaints in regard to uh, the denials of emergency services and everything else. Now, you have to learn that this is what I did in 2001, and licensing and certification is not there for the victim or to punish the lawbreakers. In 2001, after I had submitted my complaint to licensing and certification, they came back and told me that my complaint was not substantiated and that I wasn't an emergency. That is the complaint that we have the signed confession at, you know, my own private Guantanamo.com. So, when I was denied emergency services again, I wrote licensing and certification, and of course it came back non-substantiated, you know, I wasn't called in for an interview to videotape and, you know, express my side. And also, this time, as opposed to when it happened in 2001, I notified licensing and certification of the videos that I had made recording the denials of emergency services. Well, let us continue. Impala was written, you know, for people to not be triaged out of emergency. Uh, basically, I did not receive what I was supposed to receive. And um, the thing about the Impala law is that for it to get anywhere semi-enforced, you know, you have to go to the Office of Inspector General because Impala complaints are complaint-driven. That is the how they refer to the process. They don't receive a complaint, they don't investigate. Uh, you, uh, you put up with what you get from licensing and certification or Medicare or CMS, you know, with them telling you that you're wrong, you're going back with a signed confession, them saying the case is closed, never correcting their errors, moving on to the next victim. Uh, you can now see why I go to the Office of Inspector General. So. Here is my letter to the Office of Inspector General as I go down to the post office and send it certified mail return receipt. In this letter is included the flash drive that has the snapshots of my turning the hospitals into licensing and certification and also has the flash drive that contains copies of the videos and uh, what they need to go on with the case and pursue it like they did the one back to where they got the signed confession at my own private Guantanamo in 2007, even though it took six years and multi-agencies denying, you know, that I was an emergency, breaking the law, never assisting further harm in me, and now, you know, it just continues because... You know, what did the victim get from all his experiences and being dead right in 2001? Uh, as you can tell, when I go to 
the Department of Public Health, I am still being denied prepaid services as a disabled person. Thank you.